Australia's uh, longest living king prawn and they also, um, when you eat them, they're a little bit firmer or crispier than the prawns we get in the northern part of Australia. Um, and they also have more omega-3 and omega-6 oils in it. Now you'll see those big poles sticking up on the top with the round wheels on them and the springs on them. They're the boom arms. And they lay out either side of the boat and that's how she pulls the nets. Mm. So each boat will drag two nets. They open out about 15 metres and these boards on the side, they're called otter boards or bison boards, they actually, when they put the net on the bottom, they flop down like that. They're about, a, they're like a door shape. And when they start to straighten up on the wire, these things stand up on their edges and they motor out like that and open the front of the net up. Mm -hmm. Now the front of the net is made up of the chain, which runs along the bottom there, and the headline, which takes mm -hmm. the top of the net. If you saw that net coming across the bottom towards you, then the distance between the chain, if it was down near your feet, and the headline would be about that far. Mm. And the beauty about that is that excludes everything else from the fishing process. Mm. So they diminish their, their bycatch by about 85% of the stock in New Zealand. The Kiwis get the same species there. The other two main commercial species we get are the ones we get in WA, and at the sea and coals at Christmas time, they're Pennular Cygnus. And then we get tropical or painted lobsters, which occur from about broom around the Cairns. Now the interesting thing about lobster fishermen and abalone fishermen, but we concentrate on the lobster guys, is that they're the highest paid primary producers in Australia compared to the value of their product. Mm -hmm. Now, there's spare parts of the and the biggest boat, the fourth boat, and the biggest one that we look at the world is also. And that's your first sail boat. And that's got a giant first sail net on And that's what you put around the trolley, the second boat in. Mm. If we were going to farm mussels, we'd need a great swag of those. And what we do is we lease a big area of water off the state government. And across the top of the water, we have ropes running down the length of the lease. And we have the ropes separated by those black boys. Now, they're placed about, every, about 50 metres apart. And between the boys hanging off the main floating rope, we have this stuff. It's polypropylene. And what happens, the mussel scrap, which just floats free in the water column all the time, gets caught in that, mm -hmm. and of course they just grow in there like bunches of grapes. Wow, you know? that's cool. Yeah, how long um, does that take for them That grow? takes mm -hmm. about four months. Yeah. Oh, is that all? Yeah, wow. and, then, very long. yeah. and then when they get to a certain size, we come that's along okay. and we, we, we mm. pull all the mussels off, yeah. but we keep the very biggest ones. Yeah. Then we get clean and stuff, like, and the big great. ones that we yeah. keep, we have in a tub, and we pass this clean rope through there, mm. and the mussels get caught in the fibre, and then we put this cotton stocking around there, and that holds the mussel on there till they grow to commercial size, because there's a bit of a give in that to, mm. to let them grow. Mm. Then we come along and we just strip them off, mm. and then we put them in a tub, take them up to the workshop, and the guys and girls just pack them in mm. plastic bags, and mm. they just vacuum sell them. That's cool. So you've got good mussels, and mussels are good. They've got lots of minerals and stuff. Mm. In them. So they how long them. for the oh, whole time are they big enough to eat? Oh, about six months, seven months, something. Yeah. A lot. They. It's quite interesting. All of the leases yeah. mm. are in this water that runs around from Boston Bay, around here down to Prophet Bay. It's <coughs> mainly the one body of water. Yeah. Mm. But what they find every year is the mussels grow better in some places than they do in others, and they don't know why. <laughs> because it's all the same body of water. Yeah. Yeah. So they're water testing the quality of the water all the time yeah. um, to try and solve this riddle, but in 15 years, they've never solved it. Yeah. <laughs> and they water test every day.
Highly Sandy, he's one of the Jaina Barons. She's his second wife, his first wife passed away when she was quite young. This is the guy that won the Melbourne Cup three times. Now after they won the Melbourne Cup the second time, Christine came back before the meeting a bit after Tony. When she got back here, she found Tony chasing one of the girls at the work around the desk. So Christine was not too happy, but the real problem was the girl was slowing down and Tony was speeding up, so Christine was pretty upset. She said to Tony, that's it. I want the house. So we gave her the house. It's on three blocks of here. The main part of the house here on the right is five bedrooms and three bathrooms. The white building is your sauna bar, um, gymnasium, <coughs> spa pool, plunge pool, spa, plunge pool, everything in there. And then the middle part of the house is a self contained unit. Now, Christine said, the house is not enough, Tony, we want more. So then Tony gave her 70 million bucks. Wow. I don't, haven't met the girl who wouldn't like that for 70 years. Oh. Uh, Chris is losing most of the time in Melbourne. Yeah. Oh. So and what does she do now? She's just not much. Yeah, just in private. Yeah. 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 Whatever she likes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, she, there's, there's her and I think Gina Ryder has one. There's a boat that sort of, you know, one of those big cruises that goes around the world. Mm -hmm. This little yacht, this is the same make and same size that Jessica Watson sailed around. So this is what's called an SNSD. And that stands for Stevenson and Sparks. They get the fish to breed up at Arno Bay, mm -hmm. they bring them down here, and they feed them on a mixture of grain and fish offal that they make into a pelletized type of food. Mm -hmm. and they spray that on top of the water, the fish come up and eat it. Mm -hmm. And they can grow them with virtually any size, and they can grow as many kilos as they like, and they're only governed by their actual uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So if they've got the infrastructure, they can grow they're actually going to pick up, they grow about 2,000 tons a year now, and they're actually going to increase that little bit. Because in Australia, they become more and more relaxed about different types of fish. Yeah. Mm. Kingfish are nice because Aussies are like white fish. Yeah. 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 
Wyala boat. Yeah. That was just astounding that you can that you can pull something that big out of the water. It's amazing what they do. A lot of them, we built a slipway there around our own WA and we made the cradles to pull up the beach. So we got a whole lot of old truck tires and bus tires and we had duels, sometimes triples at the back, doubles at the front and the cradle that didn't need to steer very much. And we had a tractor or we had a, a turnbuckle up on the beach and the tractor drove towards the boat. And, uh, you know, but the thing you had to be careful of is it didn't get bogged in the sand. You got a 50 ton boat bogged in the sand, you really get a lot of strong. <laughs> So do you ever get sharks coming into this marina or anything? Nope. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>